Greetings everybody, um, Peter of England here bringing you some more information. Um, this is concerning uh, some information that I presented uh, to the Crown Court, for the Crown Court Appeal, to His Honour Justice Goldstaub, uh, and also presented it to the Magistrates Court for Judge John Woolard on the 10th of October 2012. This is uh, more of a constitutional issue and is addressed uh, mainly to those people of the free man movement who would term themselves purists. Um, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on what the free man movement is about and what it can and cannot constitutionally do, um, either under the auspices of a court of record or um, under the, uh, the umbrella of common law. So the two main points I'd like to address today is that I actually mentioned to the court that it was unfit to present uh, any jurisdictional authority over me because in effect the uh, Crown of England, that's Her Majesty the Queen and the Windsor family and her successors right the way back to Henry I and before that, um, were in fact Papists or Catholics and that what the House of Windsor and the Queen and the Court uh, were masquerading as were Protestants, i.e. being something different than the Catholics. And I don't think many people would argue with the fact that there is supposed to be a, a schism between the Protestant Church and the Catholic Church. But what I did is I proved that, um, that they were in fact one and the same. And that's something now we'll look at, tribal graffiti of the Illuminati. So. The first thing I will do is I will, uh, what I did is I actually showed that on a particular date, this was, um, this was in um, 1215, I shall read this part to you now, uh, the Kingdom of England and Ireland were handed over to Pope Innocent um, to, to via a, a, a a legate called Pandolf. And what this basically states here is that um, on the 15th of May 1213 at the temple near Dover, uh, a charter was issued whereby King John surrendered his kingdom to God and the apostles Peter and Paul for the service of 1,000 marks, 700 for England and 300 for Ireland. The tribute was three and a half times more than Peter's pence, as noted in the Bible. So, if we actually take the, the words that were mentioned or were given at the time, and a little bit of background to this, what we find is that uh, the English were already dissatisfied with their sovereign, um, and what happened is, eventually, uh, King John had to go on his knees before Pandolf, who was the, uh, the papal legate who was sent from Rome. John placed his hands between those of his priest and pronounced in the presence of the bishops and the lords of Ireland the following words. I, John, by the grace of God, King of England and Lord of Ireland, for the expiation of my sins, of my perfect accord and by the advice of barons, give to the Roman Church, to Pope Innocent and his successors, the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of Ireland with all the rights attached to the one and the other. I henceforward hold them of the Holy Say, of which I shall be the faithful vassal, faithful to God, to the Church of Rome, to the Sovereign Pontiff, my Lord, and to his successors, lawfully elected. I pledge myself to pay every year a tax of 1,000 marks of silver, to wit, 700 for England, and 300 for Ireland. That comes in under one of the scrolls, uh, I think it's called Scroll 66, um, and was never revoked. As I mentioned in my, my letter here that was given into uh, the court, it basically states here that uh, the history here, Magna Carta Scroll 66, shows that the handing over of the realm of England and Ireland was for gold and silver and it was handed over to the Pope in perpetuity at Dover Castle. The 
Proof of this is the fact that Henry VIII also was given the title Fide Defensor, Defender of the Faith, and that was a Catholic Roman title given to him by the Pope. And also the currency of the realm today, if you pick up any coin, you will actually see inscribed around the uh, edge of the coin, Fide Defensor, which is a Catholic title given by a Catholic Pope to a vassal of the Holy Roman Empire, which is the true crown. So for this reason, I stated to the court that there was a, 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 a lie and a fraud in the fact that they were masquerading as something that they were not. Um, if we then go and look for more proof of this, we can see that uh, if you refer to the canons of the Church of England, these are what's called the Canons Ecclesiastical, promulgated by the Convocations of Canterbury and York in 1964 and 69, and by the General Synod of the Church of England from 1970, you see some fairly uh, interesting statements here. In Roman Catholicism, there are what's called the four benchmarks, or the four signs, of the, the one true Church as the Roman Church professes to be. And that is that they are the one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. And if there's any reference to those headings, what this is basically the equivalent to is a franchise that you are operating under uh, authority of the Church of Rome. You can also see this in the fact that the Order of the Garter and the House of Windsor and most of the heads of state of Europe, the so-called monarchies, all will wear on their uniforms something called the Order of the Knights of Malta or the Maltese Cross. And this Maltese Cross is Vatican territory 100% and when you wear it, it's a badge of honour and you have to pay for the privilege of wearing it. It's a franchise badge and if you're wearing it, you're under an oath to the Holy Roman Empire and the Catholic Church. So, let's just look at here what's called the Declaration of Ascent, which is in Canon 15. Canon 15, 1, 1. The Declaration of Ascent to be made under this canon shall be set out as below. Preface. The Church of England is part of the one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church worshipping the one true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. That's a pretty serious indication to me that it's Catholic territory. Doesn't seem to be any discussion, uh, any doubt there in my mind. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds. Right. Which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. So that's a reaffirmation of the oath just like the Income Tax Acts, which have to be re-signed re or re, uh, reapplied for every year. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies. Okay. Uh, bidding Prayer 19. B19 of the Bidding Prayer, which may be used by the preacher. Before any sermon, lecture or homily, the preacher may move the people to join with him in prayer in this form, or to this effect, as briefly as is convenient. Ye shall pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. I don't think we can get more specific than that. That is, for the whole congregation of Christian people dispersed through the whole world, and, and this is the thing, especially for the Church of England. There's a segregation there showing, quite distinctly, that the Church of England is a part of the one holy catholic and apostolic church and so this is what i maintained that i accused that the house of windsor the attorney general the lord high chancellor the ministry of justice the crown prosecution service the chief constable of essex police as well as the court on the day that they were all in effect pretending to be that which they were not some of them were aware of, of, of what these oaths and what this formula is but others were not so aware. So, bringing into evidence the history of the, the, the Magna Carta on Scroll 66, 
and the title of the current reigning monarch as defender of the faith, we ask, which faith is it that they're defending? Um, so that's really as far as I wanted to go for the day, um, or today, just to really show you that there is the declarations of assent and the canonical bidding prayers of the Holy, um, sorry, of the Church of England, of which the Queen is the governor and the family or House of Windsor is the main contributing arm. And just to show you that, in fact, when the country, England and Ireland, was handed over to Pope Innocent III on that day in 1215, can anybody constitutionally prove to me, or you, that it was ever handed back? I maintain it was never handed back, and therefore, do you think that the height of, the, uh, the height of its power, the Holy Roman Church, would ever gratuitously, or for no need, or without a gun at its head, hand back England to uh, the, the, the reigning monarch as came from time to time. Don't forget, it's Lord Spiritual, Lord Temporal. And the spiritual aspect, Rome, would never hand it back, I don't think, to um, a, a, uh, a monarch of the UK or England. So if anybody can prove different, thanks for showing me. Uh, but please just be aware that these things don't just dissolve or disintegrate for non-use if there has not been a specific rescission of that declaration as it was given by a reigning monarch under his full volition. In perpetuity, it states, then it's still on the books and it's still running. And as I maintain that the Church of Rome is allowing the monarch or monarchs from the past of the UK now or England uh, to reign at its pleasure. So that's as far as I want to go today. Thank you very much. If you found it of interest, uh, don't forget, press the subscribe button, pass this on to your friends. Thank you.